Was it on? Was it on? Oops. Should we repeat ourselves? Let's do ourselves? that again. Oh, welcome, welcome to the <laughs> celebrated <laughs> nightly news of Calaveras County. County. My name's John. And I'm Sarah. And we thank you for joining us tonight or in, on another scintillating and hopefully Exciting informative edition, news edition of yes, yes. Calaveras County News That's right. and Western Alpine County. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, some, t- some days we have more Western, Western Alpine, Alpine than, than others. Do. Probably less tonight than... We've had the last couple exactly. nights. Exactly. Yeah. We've had quite but a bit in the last few nights. Technically, it is our coverage area, right? That's right. Yeah. That's okay. Right. All right. Yeah. Topping the news tonight, there's a couple pieces. Um, and one of these is we'll have more details on tomorrow. But this is kind of a sad thing. Sad story. It, it, in some ways, it may yes. actually be good for them business-wise in the long run. It because it frees be. them. it frees them up to do more things. But... Mm-hmm. And it may not be over completely yet, but for the present time, the only new car dealership in Calaveras County mm-hmm. is now gone. Is, uh, is not a new dealership, car dealership. Not a new car, car dealership. dealership um, 49er Subaru mm-hmm. um, is no longer an official Subaru dealership. Dealer. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a couple contributing factors. One of was, is, Subaru, is our understanding, we're getting more details on this tomorrow, um, <clears throat> it's our understanding that the uh, Subaru of America has been pushing them to upgrade their facility. Mm-hmm. You know, basically build a new facility. Uh, the plans were to do it on a property that runs adjacent to where the new byway is, is going in. in. Exactly. But we believe that there's been some issues with um, Caltrans maybe access, so that mm-hmm. it ended up making that parcel not a good choice. Yes. Um, and. So as it stands right now, mm-hmm. um, that, and we understand that we're going to get some details again, like we said tomorrow, tomorrow on this, but it may actually be good for 49er um, Automotive, I guess. Um, because they're, the st- they're still going to, going to oh, service Subarus. Oh, yeah, they're going to Subarus. primarily fo- focus on servicing Subarus. Mm-hmm. It may also allow them to do what some successful dealerships in other areas, for example, in Amador County, uh, Jeff Holman That's Automotive right. has done very well, serve, is, is brand agnostic, but late late model, used late cars. model used stuff, but you know, 49 exactly. would focus on four wheel drives of all makes. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. in some ways their, their business model may actually be better, but could be. could be, but I think it's gonna be an adjustment. And also I think um, in some ways just as a County pride issue. It's a sad day because they've mm-hmm. been a, there has been a new car dealership there since 1933. Yeah, started out as a Chevy dealership. Chevy dealership. Um, mm-hmm. So that's obviously the top of the news tonight. Is mm-hmm. the only new car dealership has yes. turned into a used, used car dealership. dealership. Exactly. Um, and so that's you're, so we'll have more details. Yeah, we'll talk, talk to them, them tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, as you've noticed, you probably noticed something a little different going through Angel's Camp. Mm-hmm. It's been debranded. It's been debranded. Debranded. And yes. you'll see the Subaru signs are covered mm-hmm. up. Um, so that's kind of a, that's what's a going sad on. thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my top of the That was your top of the news? That was my top of the news. I am pilfering my news tonight from cool. Dana Nichols <laughs> over at the Stockton Record. And one story he wrote actually um, just recently had to do with the moratorium Mm -hmm. on development. And as we all know, the Board of Supervisors voted not to continue the moratorium on development applications that involved zoning changes. Right. And what's happened as a result of that is that the San Francisco law firm of Shoot, Mahaley, and Weinberger sent the Calaveras County Board of Supervisors a nine-page letter on behalf of the Sierra Club and the Central Sierra Environmental Resource Center. Um, Actually, just sort of being informative to the Board of Supervisors that the Calaveras County General Plan is deficient and that the county is legally barred, that's a quote, legally barred from approving any more projects that would take advantage of those deficiencies such as the huh. lack of a plan to preserve open spaces. And actually, um, let me get his first name correct. John Buckley, who is the executive director of the Central Sierra Environmental Resource Center, was uh, 
quoted as saying that the eight, in the 18 year history of that particular organization, it has never sued Calaveras County, but he said that that could change. So more we'll threats to see. of litigation. That's huh? right. That's right. <laughs> as if Calaveras County doesn't have enough of those by itself. Yes. <laughs> so um, that's actually from Dana Nichols. And another piece back to county is we sat for almost three and a half hours oh. this morning in a um, a lively meeting, shall we say? Lively. There are quite a few people on driveway slopes, and mm -hmm. this was this is an issue that affect that does affect um, you know the, the the common thing is it affects just. District three or yes. yeah, it's cast pass, but this is action I an item that will affect it will affect everywhere every in the county. the county. So West mm -hmm. Point, um, there's some spots down by uh, Copper by the yes. lake. So mm -hmm. basically, what this the is Valley Springs is area. if they're but they are a little bit looser if they're below three thousand feet. But yes. you know the regs are a little bit looser. But one mm -hmm. of the things is is this is the driveway slope issue. We first yeah. talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and what CAL FIRE, and this is not a new regulation, this goes back to 1992, mm -hmm. and there's a regulation that stipulates that driveways cannot be over 16%. Yeah, 16 basically. to 20%. Wasn't 16 it? to 20, and so 16% and anything yeah. over 21%. That's the grade is completely unacceptable. Yes. So you figure 90, 45, half of 45. So you're not looking at a driveway a very slope. steep slope, exactly. And this issue is, we ostensibly wanted to go there to do some videoing, but I don't think the press was really invited, like, invited today. I think this was supposed to be one of those meetings that was... John just said, was, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, it's on county government property. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like, um, but... This is one of those meetings where they had stakeholders to hash out some issues, mm -hmm. and hash they did. Um, yes, yes. And I think that, and from Cal Fire's position, from their side, is they're interested in public safety, mm -hmm. and everything else outside of that is peripheral. And from yes. their, from their scope, that's the, that's the correct call. Mm -hmm. And the realtors and the construction side of the economy, they had representatives there. Because they have a responsibility to their clients. Yes, they do. And uh, excuse me. Because there are a lot of unbuilt lots. Out not there. only that, they have to comply with this. Um, there is no clear ruling now that let's say you had a home that you purchased mm -hmm. that burned down. Yes. There, as it stands right now, if there was slope issues on the driveway, mm -hmm. it is unclear whether you would get a permit to rebuild it. Mm, okay. Okay. And this even applies to some homes that were finaled and built this year. Oh, wow. So they can't move into them. Well, they can move into them. But there's no... Can they legally move into oh, them? Oh, yeah. But the, but the <laughs> essence is most of them. There's a couple so of them. So no, there's just no firm footing with it all. As it is right As now. As it is they right They need now. to hash this out. Mm -hmm. In some estimates, I tried to get a firm estimate on how long this might take. Mm -hmm. um, if they can work it out just between the stakeholders and CAL FIRE and county council, uh -huh. they may not have to go get a ruling on it from the attorney general. Okay. But because it is a state code, mm -hmm. county codes, they may have to, on what, um, there's a group now being put together that um, Doug Shin, um, several other realtors, uh, Steve Buckley, mm -hmm. um, and are included on that group. And they're ostensibly, they need to work out a list of what would be, and somebody from the county as well, of mm -hmm. what would be acceptable mitigations yes. for the county. And so basically, but going on, on steeper slope driveways, you're going to have to get approval from the local fire chief in any one mm -hmm. of the 10 different districts in the county. Yeah. Um, and here, obviously, Ebbets Pass, the EPFD and uh, Warren Wilkes has taken mm -hmm. the lead on that. And mm -hmm. he's been very receptive to being able to work out mitigations with mm -hmm. people. Um, mm -hmm. But this is the issue um, on public works is, you know, from the public works side of it now, because they have to approve these is because they don't have they don't believe they have clear legal footing to set parameters mm -hmm. 
um, Steve Buckley's, you know, asked some different scenarios and how mm -hmm. could you get projects approved now? And the technical yeah. answer is yes, oh, you can okay. on steep driveways, but it's going to be really hard until okay. they get the okay. ruling so done. So it's, it's Public Works is involved, and then the Community <laughs> Development Department would be involved as well. Correct. Then. Okay. So, so you have two levels you of build now, local government involved. Yeah, if you build now on a a driveway that has a slope. You have to get approval by the local fire mm -hmm. governing agency. You uh, planning, uh, building has to sign off on mm -hmm. it, and, and public, public works, works have to sign off on it. Okay. Um, and there's different. So they're working up a mitigation list now, and this was a um, the first toward the end. Everybody started talking and thawing a little bit and started mm -hmm. working acceptable ways to, to work on this issue. But but at the at the first part of the meeting, mm -hmm. it was pretty entranced in trans yes. positions. I mean, kind of like you'd see at the beginning of a strike negotiation mm -hmm. or something. Exactly. It was pretty the There's first no wiggle, we're, we're, Yeah, the no first half hour of it was exactly. was a pretty pretty tight. Yes. Um, but they're going to come back and talk about it again. Yes. And so I es estimate a couple weeks uh, they will be talking about this again, and uh, hopefully they'll have some movement on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but as it sits right now, and I think some of the things that, and I have no doubt that they'll get worked out. It's yeah. some acceptable range, kind of like the septic issue was. But out of this, there will be some lots that mm -hmm. become unbuildable. There, yeah. Out of this, there will be a certain number of lots that, mm -hmm. because of the way they're configured, if you factor in, where a septic would need to be, where yeah. uh, other things would need to be. Uh, but there's other, last little bit on this and we'll move mm -hmm. on, but there's other things too. Is for example, if you bought a lot that you bought to put your house up on top for the view, that mm -hmm. you're going to have these 360 degree views, mm -hmm. but you need a steep driveway to get there, mm -hmm. it may not happen. You may be able to build on the lot, but you may have to put like off street parking right off the right, street, exactly. put your house closer mm -hmm. to the road. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to actually, so they build wouldn't a approve parcel. the driveway is what they wouldn't approve. Correct. Is that what you're saying? And there's okay. all kinds of scenarios yes. like, what if the driveway was mm -hmm. actually the parking in your garage was down by the road, and the uh, ten foot wide path going mm -hmm. up to the house wasn't really a driveway? Well, so there's all these scenarios on. <laughs> There's legalese for no, you. Just, you know, there's, you know, <laughs> that is just a 10-foot strolling path, right? Yes, and exactly. So there was all these different scenarios on what if it's not a driveway, <laughs> what right? What if it's just a pathway? What if there were stairs? That happens to be paved. What if we decided to put in an elevator instead? That's right. You know, so... Um, <laughs> Well, you know, there's always, there's what do they say? There's always more than one way to skin a cat. Right. But this does get into um, property rights issues because mm -hmm. one of these things is, yes, their interest is, pu interest is in public safety, but do property owners have the right to build a house that knowingly, if they know the risks, yeah, their response time on somebody trying to be, help them there would, would not, not be, be good. good. Exactly. And the odds of it, they're getting a, a acceptable fire coverage in there probably wouldn't be real good either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But should they still be allowed the rights to use their property as they see fit? And that, yeah. it'll be... So it'll be interesting to watch this unfold. Very. Definitely. And then I have another story. Great. Up from Dana Nichols from the Stockton Record. He went to the study session on Tuesday that the Board of Supervisors was having with their lobbyist group, the Ferguson Group, whom they pay $128,000 a year to lobby for them in Washington, D.C. And a couple of things that came out of it were that the lobbying group recommended that a pub, a, and actually an elected official be one of the people that goes back to Washington, D.C. to help them lobby legislative sure. Le legislative so members. builds a personal relationship back there with some of the... Yes, because yeah. what happens is not only does the Ferguson Group lobby, but at certain times during the year, staff members from uh, at the administrative office, like um, Assistant CAO Francine Osborne and other staff members, go back to Washington, D.C., to work in conjunction with the Ferguson Group to lobby legislative members and the. Uh, Would they ever send us back there? I don't think, I don't so. think so. No, yeah. no. We may get a lot done though. 
But they probably definitely wouldn't send any money back to we Calaveras County. We know legislative County. members. Yeah, but but would they want to send they money to Calaveras? They give us money. Okay. All they right. could. You don't know. All right. But anyway, they <laughs> said, uh, the Ferguson group said it would it may be more beneficial if an elected official was someone who was also accompanying the staff right. members back there. Right. And also two th two kiss the holy. Ring, yeah, so exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, two issues, actually. There were yes, eight issues. On, yeah, exactly. Yes, Senator. Yes, Senator. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like Boxer's going to talk to us. You know? <laughs> we are a rural county. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Any, anyway. She has more people in her garage. Than I know, than no, we have in the hall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, Feinstein is a different story. Yeah. But anyway, two, um, two issues came out as being sort of the top issues. Uh, on the county's wish list this year, and one of them was a request for $800,000 towards the feasibility study of a proposed flood control project along Cros Cosgrove Creek and Valley Springs. Right. Um, the second is a one mil is one million dollars to provide safe walking and bicycle routes for students at Jenny Lynn, and there was actually a third one as well. The three top ones was a three hundred and seventy five federal contribution toward upgrading the sheriff's department's communication systems. Huh. So we'll see. But doesn't eight hundred thousand for just a study sound like a lot of money? It does to me, but this is government. Man, how about eight hundred thousand to actually do something? Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, huh, wouldn't it? Instead of just study it. That would be something. Because that was my only. Can you imagine that actually happening though? Because that was my only, <laughs> that was my only issue with that broadband meeting they had exactly. a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> right? Because they were looking at it was a. They were trying to raise awareness for mm -hmm. get funds to study broadband. It's like we don't need study. We just need, <laughs> we just need to lay the more lines. Of it. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you get know, it it's um... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. So I thank Dana Nichols, great illustrious reporter for the Stockton Record, for providing those stories. Also, we happened to stop by the Calaveras Visitors That's Bureau. That's right. They had their open, open house, house today. today. They had great cookies. I had mm -hmm. a cup of coffee. They gave you coffee. Yeah. Cookies wow. and coffee. And we had the chance to talk to Lisa Reynolds. Now, Lisa Reynolds is the executive director. Yes. And she does a great job she selling does. the county. She does. Um, and she's holding here the copy of the new Calaveras County Visitor's Guide. Mm -hmm. They came in today. And this year they printed... 100,000 of them. Really? And we believe it was 12 or 13 pallets. Wow. Pallets of. Wow, there's some yeah. storage. So they got to, you know, they had to figure out okay, we need a forklift to get them off the truck, mm -hmm. to get them into the storage. Mm -hmm. so they were logistically trying to figure out how to get that how done. How to get them all there. Mm -hmm. um, so they have the new means visitors' guide. They have guides. that many people actually requesting yeah. the visitors' guides, which is very cool. And were there had there been a lot of people coming through? Because I yes. saw a lot of cars. Yes, in the it was a very busy thing. There, mm -hmm. you know, for their um, open house. Very nice. And... Very nice. And you have a <laughs> you have a deer vehicle collision, don't you? Over yeah. There? Um, and this is one that's kind of a breaking. <laughs> I'm like, news don't you, one. John? Over so if there? you're watching this at ten o'clock tonight on the mm -hmm. replay, just. Kind ignore of ignore it. it. Yeah. Uh, but CHP is reporting a, this is, as we went on air, a, a mm -hmm. vehicle collision on Highway 4 at Big Trees State Park. Mm -hmm. And a vehicle collision ambulance is responding. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was actually, where is the, the one I was talking about? And also, a little, oh, I think we have pictures of that too. Did they pull in? What? Of what? Oh, last night there was a spaghetti dinner for the people who right. burned 200 down. That's right. Two hundred spaghetti dinners. Spaghetti were sold. dinners. That was at the Foothills Restaurant in Murphy's. Yeah. And uh, did you get photos for that? I did. Where is it? Maybe I didn't pull them in yet. Murphy's Square is having a holiday open house Thursday, December thirteenth. Yes, they are. Murphy's from, Nursery, mm -hmm. all the consignment stores. From, so go in there and exactly buy four p.m. to eight ish. So there will be food, raffle, bonfire, a visit from Mr. and Mrs. Claus. So that's something to stop by tomorrow all right. night on Thursday. We took pictures at the restaurant, and we will post Foothill Restaurant, and we will post them up later. But yes, mm -hmm. two hundred meals. Two hundred meals is a lot. That should meals. really help the the family the out for this Christmas. Exactly. So. That is really a nice thing. Actually, the uh, non-injury vehicle accident I was talking about, it was a non-injury vehicle versus deer collision. 
this morning. Ah. It was on Highway 49 and Gold Strike Road. Sorry. So, two accidents today. And also, mm -hmm. one of the things is uh, we post first posted on the site a couple weeks ago is the Leadership Calaveras is mm -hmm. a is a group that is sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce and basically it's a group of industry of basically county leaders. So it's not you know mm -hmm. you think of Leadership Calaveras class you may think it's a bunch of young kids trying to but that's not no. what this class is. This They're is like basically adult people. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> <clears throat> members of the community that are looking at studying a specific problem and crafting solutions for it. And the project last year for this group was the jail. And it was their work mm -hmm. that was the impetus for driving forwards, uh, for driving that whole issue forward. They did some great work on, um, on the jail issue. Yes. And this year, Leadership Calaveras County is, take, is tackling broadband and they're trying to promote additional broadband uh, usage in the county, different ways, you know, problem solving on the broadband issue. And there are some there are some questionnaires that they would like for you to fill out and fax back to Suki Tuthill. Mm -hmm. And they are a business survey if you're a business owner, if you're a residential user, or if you're a visitor to the county mm -hmm. of what things would you like to see regarding broadband access and internet access um, for Calaveras County. Okay. All right. So they're right there. So Print them. That's fax right. them back or yeah. email them. They're looking for input. To Suki Tuthill. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be tabulating your responses. Oh. Tabulating and tabulating. Very nice. And last night, the uh, Calaveras Republican Committee hosted a festive nonpartisan holiday dinner. It was a nonpartisan. And that was at the Met in San Andreas. And apparently over 80 people attended... And you can tell it's nonpartisan because Supervisors Tom Tryon and Marita Calloway were there. We're all there. We're all there. As, as were actually Dana Jorgensen from Senator Dave Cox's office. And let's see, Bob Phelan uh, representing Assemblymember Tom Berryhill. Bob Dorr representing Congressman Dan Lundgren. And Administrative Assistant Bill Cordoza representing Bill Leonard, who is a member of the State Board of Equalization. Uh -huh. So, apparently, and apparently Cuneo cooked again. Let me see this. Dead air, dead air. Don Cuneo. He was the cook? Was the cook. And he does, have you ever tasted any of his, mm. he's very, very good. good. Very good. Very good. Yes, right. so, nonpartisan event for the Calaveras County Republicans. And on hard-hitting, scintillating news, yes. last night, the winner of Turkey Talk was mm -hmm. announced. Was announced. <laughs> now, if you're new to this contest, there has been lots of activity on our site coming yes. up with a name for the turkey who has taken up residence in the Big Trees Shopping, shopping center, center in exactly. Arnold. And it's been known to hang out in front of Bistro Espresso mm -hmm. and Panhandle for... Food Whatever it and can get. donuts mm -hmm. and coffee, espresso. So if you've ever seen a turkey on espresso, they're really, yeah. Now, there was probably, there was a lot of names bandied about. Uh -huh. And I think Larry Geiger, the owner of Bistro Espresso, we mm -hmm. since he was going to be providing the gift certificate for this winner and the naming, yes. we thought he should be able to pick to be the, the winner, one right? Yes. And he chose Cranberry. I think that's a and nice that's kind name. of a sweet name because the turkey is a female. That's right. So there was mm -hmm. uh, there were other other names like Java Jenny, yeah, Bistro mm -hmm. Betty. You know, there's all kinds of different names for this turkey. Uh -huh. But cranberry is a good name. Cranberry. So cranberry is the name. I wonder if the turkey gets cold. If cranberry gets cold out there. I don't know. Oh. She was running pretty pretty good to try to escape our cameras a couple was days. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of the way. It's some crazed guy trying to take pictures exactly. of me. Exactly. Oh, no. And somebody oh, no. asked me when I went into a store last night if we got a release from the turkey. Because we were oh, using. Oh, really? Yeah. I wanted to know if we, if we were, got, a, got a release. Um, and one last little bit in Alpine County news mm -hmm. is this is. Now. Murphy's has Buggy Bill, mm -hmm. so if you want to take that romantic ride, yes, Lake Alpine. Bear Valley has, has or Lake Alpine area has the Lake Alpine Resort Snowcat. Yes. Now this is your taxi. 
-hmm. Because Lake Alpine Lodge now is open year round this year. Mm -hmm. So I actually think this is pretty cool. I think this is going to be one of those things that everybody in the area should at least once a year take the romantic ride back in over the snow covered roads Mm -hmm. and have dinner at the lodge. That's right. Overlook the frozen lakes. Or stay the night because stay the night. Cabins are available. Yep. So there is. Instead of Buggy Bill, this is the Bear Valley Lake Alpine area equivalent Equivalent of of a romantic Mm horse-drawn carriage, right? Yes. It's probably a lot warmer, too. The Lake Alpine Snowcat. That's right. That's right. And we should go to weather. We should go to weather, yes. We should go to weather. Arnold weather, Thursday, mostly sunny with a high of 45 degrees. Thursday night, 37 degrees. Friday, mostly sunny with a high of 47 and Friday night, 35, Saturday, 45, and Saturday night, low of 33. Bear Valley, partly cloudy with low of 23 tonight, high of 36 tomorrow, 40 on Friday, low of 23 Friday night, oh, 21 tomorrow night for the low, 23, 36, and 23. Partly cloudy, it looks like the next real wave of precipitation will come in the next first week. of the week. Mm-hmm. So it looks mm-hmm. like the storm... You know, that will be the next round of precipitation. And they do open back up for the season tomorrow. Yes, Thursday. For the season. Mm-hmm. Murphy's weather. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high of 55 degrees. Thursday night, low 33. Friday, 56 degrees. Friday night, 34. And Saturday, 55 with a low of 31 degrees. For our friends at Angels Camp, partly cloudy with a low of 36 tonight, 53 tomorrow, 34, 54, 36, 54. 33, 52, and 34. Wow. Those are your temperature ranges for the next few days. That's right. That's right. In Copperopolis, Thursday, 54 and 32. Friday, 54 and 31. And Saturday, 54 and 31. And for our friends in Bangor, Maine, there has been a warming trend of late. Wow. Is it 38 degrees degrees and snowing (laughs) and with a low of 7 tonight and a low of 21 and 14. There's the highs and lows for tomorrow. 25 and 9 and 22 and 11. But earlier, the projected low for t- a couple of days ago, the projected low for tonight, I think was as low as 2, wasn't it? Yes, it was. 2. So yes. it's been a warming, tree, warming trend of 5 degrees. Yes, actually, so which is kind of, it, it makes balmy. a difference. It makes a difference. I mean, between 2 and 7, even if it's only psychological, right? Yes, I would think so. I would think so. <laughs> Valley Springs, Thursday, 53 degrees, 32 low. Friday, 54 degrees with a low of 34, and Saturday, 54 degrees with a low of 30 degrees. And we thank you for stopping by. We really mm-hmm. appreciate it. Um, we hope you have a, a good evening, and you're hoping you're, mm-hmm. you're getting all revved up in your holiday season. And mm-hmm. uh, we will see you back here tomorrow night to tell you what to do. That's right. That, uh, That's what yeah, we'll Thursday do. Thursday night, you don't have to worry about thinking about anything for the weekend because we'll tell you. We'll do the thinking for you, if you can call it that. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Good night. Good night.